the last the last month you don't do this always as a preacher but the last month or two I guess two months every time I stepped into the pulpit on Sunday morning I knew exactly what I was supposed to do you don't always do that but I have the last little while and I do today know exactly what I'm supposed to say and so uh, I hope this will help you and encourage you and be a blessing to you I'm going to ask you the parents to help me if you have small children help me try to keep it quiet it's noisier than usual here today and I want you to help me the best you can to keep it quiet all right if you have your Bible, Revelation chapter 20, you look down verse 11. Look at verse 11. I'm going to read you a passage here and preach to you about something this morning. Revelation chapter 11, and look down, or 20, chapter 20, verse 11. The Bible says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Look closely. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Verse number 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You have an account, verse 11 to 15, of the great white throne of judgment. I'm going to preach to you this morning on the subject, Judgment Day. Judgment Day. The Bible here in Revelation chapter 20 speaks to you about Judgment Day. And uh, there's a day coming when everybody will face the judgment. I don't know why this kind of preaching has been on my mind so strong the last couple of weeks, but for some reason it has. I want you to remember today, remember, someday you will stand before God. Amen. If everybody in this building would live in light of the fact that someday you one-on-one -on -one will stand before God, it would change your life. Amen. When you're at school during the day, young people, if you'd remember that someday, whatever you do, whatever you listen to, whatever you say, whoever you hang around with, someday you're going to stand before God. At work, each day as you work, someday you're going to stand before God. It don't make no difference if you're poor, if you're uh, uh, the, the least person in the factory where you work. If you have the worst job there, you're going to stand before God. Right. If you're the boss man or the owner of the factory and you own the whole thing and you've got all the money and all the say-so, you're going to stand before God and give an account. Right. The Bible said, I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open. Right. I'm talking to you this morning about Judgment Day. You've heard people talk about Judgment Day and there is a day of judgment coming. That day will come. It'll be here someday. I want you to remember something. As long as you live, I get so sick and tired of people saying, well, I get tired of going to church. I'm not going to church because there's hypocrites creates in the church. I don't want to go down there because I know somebody goes down there and they're running around on their husband or wife and they still go to church down there, so I'm not going. You remember something, you're not going to stand before the hypocrite and give account of your life. You say there's hypocrites all over the place. The hypocrite's not the one that's going to judge you. Someday you will stand face to face before God Almighty and a hypocrite is no excuse. I don't care what you, if you like me or you don't like my hair, my clothes or the way I do things or the way I holler or anything else. You just remember, you're not going to stand before me and give your account. Right. Don't come to church to impress me. Don't read your Bible to impress me. I'm not the one you're going to stand before. Right. Someday, face to face, one on one, you'll stand before God and give account of your life. Right. You're not going to stand before your Sunday school teacher. You're not going to stand before a deacon in the church. You're not going to stand before your boss man at work. You, one on one, someday, will stand before God when Judgment Day comes. Judgment Day's coming. I know sometimes we lose reality, and the things I face this week has really brought reality to my mind. You see how things are real and how they really happen just like God said they would. And I'm going to tell you this, judgment day is coming. God said it would and it's coming. There will be a judgment day. A person goes to the jail, you're arrested, they take you to jail and they put you in jail and you await your, your sentencing while you're there in jail. You stay there until your sentencing day comes, then you come out and stand before a judge and he sentences you for your crime. If you die before Jesus Christ comes back, uh, you'll die and you'll, and, and you'll go to hell immediately just like that. You'll wake up in hell. And you'll stay there until judgment day comes. And when judgment day comes, God will bring you out of, of uh, the county jail, out of hell where you're at, and He will judge you and cast you into a lake of fire. If you're alive whenever He comes back, if you live through it all, which I doubt you will, and you're there, immediately God will resurrect you and you'll stand before His great white throne and face Him one-on-one -on -one to give an account for your life. 
judgment day is coming. There is a judgment day. Now, people nowadays are living slack, living life like they want to, and you, you half come to church, you're half hearted, and you don't know whether you're saved or not, and you play around with God, and you don't know if your soul's right with God, you don't know if you died, you'd go to heaven or hell. One of these days you'll close your eyes, and you'll wake up before the great white throne judgment to give an account to God Almighty for everything you've done, everything you said. The judgment day is coming. I'll show you four things in this passage. Look at verse number 11. Number 1 and verse number 11, the Bible said, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it. First of all, I want you to see the judge. The judge, the Bible said, And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. The first thing you see is the judge who's sitting on the throne. Who is the judge that's sitting on his great white throne? His eyes, according to the Bible, are as a flame of fire. The earth is His footstool, and He holdeth the span of the seas in His hand. Listen, when we think of Jesus, you think of Jesus, you see those little pictures that somebody's drawn of Him. You see a little mimic and white, uh, pale white Jew somewhere on a picture. He's got two or three wounds in His side. And you think someday you're going to stand before Him, and He's going to be meek like some sort of Catholic priest or something like that. And he's going to, you're going to look Him face to face and stand there and give all your excuses, and He's going to talk to you and be gentle and kind, not at the great white throne judgment. He's not. The Bible said his eyes are as a flame of fire. His hair white like wool. And he says, in judgment, there will be no mercy that day. He'll sit there on the throne. The Bible said, the earth and the heaven fled away. They were afraid of him. And saw him in his eyes and saw the fear. They were afraid of him. Amen. I'm talking about the judge that will sit on the throne. You imagine the Bible said he holdeth the span of the seas in his hand. He uses the earth as his footstool. You'll stand before him and you'll see a throne and a king on that throne so big you never imagined bigger than the planet earth, man. And you'll be a little bitty human being standing before, standing before the judge of this universe. One-on-one, face-to-face. See, we've lost reality. I'm talking about how it's really going to be. You see, the judge. The white throne, the Bible said, listen to this, the Bible said, and there was found no place for them. That means when you stand before the great white throne judgment, you'll look above you and there'll be nothing. And you'll look to your right hand and to your left hand and there'll be Nothing. And you'll look under your feet and you'll be suspended in mid-black, dark air and there's nowhere for your feet to be. The Bible said there was found no place for them. You, without your Sunday school teacher, without your excuses, without everything you've got, without your money, without your houses, without your land, you'll stand suspended in mid-air, shivering and shaking before an almighty God to give an account with nothing to face Him one-on-one. I'm talking about the judge. The judge. You come down here today and you... Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you. As a gentleman, He'll keep His Word and come into your heart and be the best friend you've ever had. Amen. But if you reject Amen. Him someday, you'll stand before Him face to face and He'll look at you in wrath and judgment with eyes as a flame of fire and He won't love you. He'll have no care for you. He'll have no mercy for you. He's your judge. He's your judge. The Bible said in Acts chapter 17, But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent because He hath appointed a day in the which He will judge the world in righteousness. The Bible said He'll judge this world in righteousness. Not according to excuse, not how well you've done, not how hard you've tried, not how the best that you could do or anything else. He will do it in righteousness. Exactly what's right, exactly the way it was supposed to be. God will judge you in righteousness face to face. I'm talking about the judge. Listen, it's better that anybody in this world turn on you than the person that loves you the most. If anybody in this world turns on you and turns their back on you, it's better that anybody do it than the person in this world that loves you the most. A woman married a man and she loved him with all of her heart and uh, she gave him her whole childhood and her life and she buried his children. They had two or three children together and she loved him more than life itself. And this man fell in love with another woman. He'd come in drunk at night and he'd beat the kids and beat his wife and the, the situation got horrible and he killed one of those infant babies when he'd come in drunk one night and he got off the hook. And he left her and left her there with a dead baby with her life miserable. And she told the preacher this. She said, I hate him more than anything in the universe. And she said, I'd give anything in the world to take a dull knife and cut his heart out. You say, what happened? What happened was the person that loved him the very most became the very worst enemy they could ever have. And the worst thing that could ever happen to you as a human being, the worst thing you could ever face is when God Almighty that created this world and put you here and loved you and gave you air to breathe and food to eat and a place to walk and health to work and gave you money and provided for you and loved you and cared for you, when that God turns on you and becomes the worst enemy you've ever had and He hates you, He hates the sight of you, He has no mercy and He doesn't care for you anymore. It's the worst thing that could ever happen. The judge of the universe. I'm talking about the wrath of the Lamb. 
A young boy disowned his father one time and he left his family and turned his back on his childhood and the things that he knew and he left his home and he lived in sin for years and years and years and years. And his daddy was a lawyer when he left home. For years he lived in sin. And he bore the march of sin on his life. He was a young man and he looked 20 years older than he did when he, than he did his actual age because of the march of sin. One day he got caught and it was a crime that was punishable by life in prison. And the, the, his lawyer got him together and they went in before the judge and they walked into the courtroom for sentencing. And the boy's heart just began to pound with excitement as he looked behind the bar and there sat his dad. He was the judge. From the time he had left, he had went from a lawyer to a judge and now he was sitting on the throne and this young man was just thrilled with excitement because it was his father and he knew that it was his father and that he loved him and he'd have mercy on him because he was his son. And immediately when that young man walked in, the judge knew who he was. He recognized his son through the scars of sin and the wickedness that he had lived. He recognized him. And he walked in and he came down and stood before that judge. And that judge looked at him and he said, Having heard the sentence brought against you, or the crimes brought against you, the charges, he said, I now sentence you to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And the young man broke down and fell to his knees with tears streaming down his face. And he said, but Daddy, don't you know who I am? Daddy, I'm your son. Don't you know me, Daddy? I'm your own child, Daddy. Don't you know me? He said, son, years ago I was your father. Today I'm your judge and you'll spend the rest of your life in prison. It will amaze you someday when you reject Jesus Christ and you stand before Him. And He was your Savior. He was your best friend. He was the one that loved you and wanted to take care of you and wanted to save you on earth. But now He's no more that friend. He's no more that Savior. He's your judge in righteousness and you'll bring His wrath down on you that day. He's the judge of the universe. I'm talking about judgment day. The Bible said it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The most horrible, wicked thing you've ever done, the most horrible nightmare you've ever faced is to, the, to fall into the hands of an angry God. That's right. People think, oh, I can just live any way I want to and do what I want to and, and, and God will still love me and He'll still care for me. God loves you while you're here. But when you leave this world, it's a whole different story. That's right. It's a different story. Number two, not only the judge, but in verse number 12, the Bible says, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The second thing you see in verse number 12 is those being judged. Not only do we see the judge, but we see those being judged. You say, who's that? It's the dead, small and great. No make no difference. How small they are, how great they are. The small, he said the small would stand before God. That's the bum on the street. That's those people over in India that are that big around. They're starving to death. And some of those kids are sitting around and their bellies are swelled up and they've never had a decent meal in their life and they're dying of starvation and the flies are landing all over their body and they're nasty and they have no water that's drinkable and they're filthy. They'll stand before God, every one of them, and give an account. I'm talking about the bum on the street that has nothing, lives in a cardboard box. I saw them when I was in L.A. laying all over the streets in cardboard boxes. That's all they had. They had a little handful of junk. They got out of a trash can. That's all they had. That's the ones that will stand before God face to face and give an account. I'm talking about the small. I'm talking about the poor living in a shack on the back side of the hill somewhere. They don't have anything. They don't have any money and nobody cares about them. They'll stand before God. I'm talking about the people that you work with side by side that you see every day and they work a job 40 hours a week just to try to make ends meet and they struggle through this life and they leave this life as the small and they stand before God to give an account. I'm talking about the Buddhist. I'm talking about the Muslims. I'm talking about the Baptist and the Methodist and the Catholic and the Presbyterian. I'm talking about everybody, the small, standing before God to give an account for what they've done. The Bible said the small would stand before God. It don't make no difference. You think nobody knows you, nobody cares about you, and, and nobody knows who you are, and God maybe just might let you slide because you wasn't important. The Bible said the small would stand before God. That's right. Every one. That's every right. one. God knows. Listen to me, according to that book, God knows how many hairs are in your head. That's right. He knows what you've done. He knows what you've done. Those being judged the small, the Bible said the small and the great. The great would stand before God. I'm talking about priests and popes and professors and doctors, and lawyers, and bank presidents. I'm talking about movie stars, Julia Roberts, and Mel Gibson, Eddie Murphy, and Arsenio Hall, and everyone in the heroes, and your movie stars, and the people on television. Every one of them, one by one, they act tough, and they can blaspheme God, and make fun out of it, make dirty pictures, and everything else. But someday, one-on-one, face-to-face, they'll stand before God Almighty, shivering in the rags of their sin, looking at Him, facing Him, one-on-one, for the sins they've committed in this life. I'm talking about the great, the movie stars, and the sports stars, Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, and Mike Tyson, and everybody else, and the, the picture of your favorite 
basketball team, the quarterback, your favorite football team, and the center, your favorite basketball team. I'm talking about everyone that signed autographs and lived a life of luxury and made $10 million a year. And people loved them, wanted to see them, wanted to touch them, wanted to get their autograph. One by one in the rags of their sin, they'll shiver and stand before God and give an account for their life and the things that they've done. I'm talking about rock stars, Mariah Carey, Madonna, and Paul Abdul, and Prince, and Michael Jackson, all the rest of them, and all the groups that you uh, kids uh, love that you shouldn't listen to, and all those people, one by one, face to face, they will stand before God Almighty. The Bible said the great stand before Him. You know, the Bible said great men are not always wise. They'll stand before God and give an account. I'm talking about John Lennon who said the Beatles were more popular than Jesus Christ. Matthew twenty two twelve. One of the saddest verses you ever find the Bible is Matthew twenty two twelve. And the Bible said, And he saith unto him, Friend, <clears throat> how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? This is the judgment. Listen to what he said. He said, How camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? The judgment. Great white throne judgment. You know what? The, the, one of the saddest things in all the Bible was was the answer that was given. You know what the Bible said? And he was speechless. You said, if I find out all this stuff's real and I find out all this church business is real and I find out all this thing about judgment's real, someday, whenever I get before God, I'm going to beg Him and I'm going to fall down on my knees and I'm going to repent and I'm going to ask Him to forgive me, give me and tell, tell Him that I'm sorry. I just really didn't know. I, I wasn't sure and I wanted to make sure and I wanted to see Him face to face and make sure it's all real. And now I'm sorry and now I want to do right. The Bible said, you would say nothing and you'd stand there speechless with your mouth shut. You shall come before the judge and I'll tell him this and I'll tell him why. And I'll tell him I had a bad childhood. And I'll tell him things were bad in my life. You'll say nothing. You'll stand there with your mouth shut. You rejected Jesus Christ. You turned him away. And you'll stand there shivering and not say one word while he pronounces your sentence. And he'll cast you in like a fire. And that's the end of it. That's right. That's right. The Bible said they're speechless. A friend of mine was preaching on the street one time. And uh, he, the fellow came by him and he said, Listen, you need to be saved. Jesus loves you. And that fellow said, Jesus... He said, I get to heaven, I'll reach up and choke him and jerk him off his throne. That's what he said. No, you won't. You'll stand there and you'll shiver in the rags of your sin That's right. and try to say, God, be merciful. And he'll say, shut up, you had your chance. That's right. Amen. I'm talking about those being judged, the small and the great, standing before God with nothing to say. The Bible said, Proverbs 20, verse 8 and 9, A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. And the rest of that verse says, Who can say, I am pure from my sin? You know who can say that? <clears throat> nobody. Because nobody will say anything. The Bible said, He scattereth away all evil with His eyes. All He'll have to do is look at you. <clears throat> I can imagine today, I, there's no way preaching that I, <clears throat> that I can uh, <clears throat> uh, illustrate to you, show to you what it'll be like. But I can imagine today, as Jesus Christ is sitting on His great white throne, and people are standing before Him, and you stand and you look up there and you see those eyes as a flame of fire. And He's scattering away all evil with His eyes. And you feel the presence of God and you're afraid. And then Jesus Christ pulls His hands up and puts them on the chairs of that throne. And you see those nail prints in His hands. And you think, those nail prints were for me. And I said, no. That was my chance. It was my way out. And I said, no. It's a sad thing, but somebody sitting here today, if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior... You'll be at that judgment someday. That's right. That's right. You'll be among the small and the great standing before God to give an account of your life. <clears throat> you see the judge, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see those being judged, the small and the great. Number three, I want you to see the record by which they are judged. You say, what's going, well, how's He going to do it? What's He going to judge them by? What will God judge me by? I'm going to show you the record in that passage by which they'll be judged. The Bible said in verse number 12, I saw the dead, small and great stand before God. Here goes. And the books were opened. And this is one of the most amazing things in all the Bible. You probably didn't even know this. The Bible said the books, 66 of them, were open, And another book was open, which is the book of life. Amen. And they were judged every man according to those things which were written in the book of Genesis to Revelation. Amen. There they are. There they are. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. Sin is transgression of the law, one right after another, one right after another. They were judged according to those things which are written in the books. Amen. Amen. Forsake not the assembling of thyselves together as the manner of some is. 
till I come give attendance to reading, study to show thyself approved unto God, a work that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. One by one, the books will be open. And every man will be judged according to those things which were written in the books. That's the record by which you'll be judged. There's not one sin that man can commit that you don't find in the Bible. That's right. They're all there. That's right. Everything in this life that's a sin is found in that Bible. <clears throat> the Bible said in John twelve forty eight. listen to this. He that rejecteth me, Jesus said, He that rejecteth me, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him. In the latter time. Amen. You know what Jesus said if you reject Him? He said the words that He spoke to you are the same that will judge you in the last day. That's right. You say, what are those words? You hold them in your lap. He's going to open them and judge you according to those things which He spoke. In Hebrews 4.12, the Bible said, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And the Bible said in Hebrews 4.12, And is a discerner of the thoughts and intense of the heart. Amen. Amen. Did you know the King James Bible knows what you're thinking? Yes. It knows what you think before you think it. It knows what you intended to do before you did it. And when God opens those books, He's going to judge you with everything you ever thought, everything you ever intended to do, everything that you ever done. He's going to judge you. I'm talking about the record by which they are judged. <clears throat> Down here, a lot of people put on defense and they got a lot of money and their sentence is lightened. Down here they put on a good case and the sentence is cut down. They're lighting. They get by real good. It won't be like that there. That's right. Not in the last judgment. Not in the judgment day. It won't be that way. You won't put on a good good defense. You won't get out lightly. You won't hire a lawyer to help you. You're on your own. That's right. Speechless on your own. See what's so bad about not being able to say anything? You know what you've done. You know you didn't do right. You know you didn't get saved. And you know what you've done. And as you stand there speechless, what you've done will speak for you. That's right. And God goes back and maybe takes a big old screen there, I don't know, and puts in a tape of your life and shows you the things that you did and you thought when you thought nobody else was looking. And He said, I know, I know, I know. And you'll see your life back before your eyes and you thought nobody else knew. I'm talking about the record by which they're judged. <clears throat> Here's the court case there. As I said preaching the other day, the prosecuting attorney is the devil. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. He'll stand before God and say he did this, and he did that, and he did this, and he did that. And the judge sits on the throne. And there's no one to plead for you. That's right. See, if you're saved, if you're a Christian, Jesus Christ is your lawyer. Amen. And when they speak for you in court, you don't have to say a word. Jesus Christ will lift His hand and say, I paid His price. Amen. And you go free. Amen. But as you stand there that day after you rejected Him, you stand there all by yourself. And Jesus Christ is over on the side of the courtroom. And nobody to go for you. Nobody. You say, where's my, where's, where's my help? Where's my lawyer? He's on the throne with eyes as a flame of fire. Amen. Listen to this. If you die lost today, <clears throat> say... Brother Bill died today and he was lost without God. And I believe he's saved. I wouldn't use him as an illustration. He died today and he died without Jesus Christ and he went up to heaven and he stood there. A big sign would say, Bill Ballard versus God. Your name versus God. Who do you think is going to win? Who do you think is going to win the case? You can't speak. Nobody will speak for you. Nobody will speak on your behalf. And God is in control. Who do you think will win? You'll be judged in Jesus Christ or you'll be judged by Him. That's right. This morning, if I could take a set of balances and I could put them up here, I could show you the judgment. And I'd take a set of balances. You remember how they used to use the balances and they'd put something in this side and maybe they'd take the coins or the money or whatever and weigh it out on this side. And when the balance evened out, then everything was even. <clears throat> it was up to par. The Bible said in the book of Daniel, Thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. You know what he said? He said they took you and put you in one side of the balance over here and put Jesus Christ in the other side and your side went up. 
And what you've got to do to go to heaven, what you've got to do to get in and be saved is to measure up to Jesus Christ. And you get in this side over here in the balance and Jesus Christ is in this side. And you put everything, every time you ever went to church over here, every time you ever read the Bible over here, every time you ever witnessed over here, every time you ever did anything good over here, everything you could ever think of that you ever did good, you put it over here with you. And thou art weighed in the balances and still found wanting. That's right. That's right. There's no way you can measure up. There's no way. So what's going to happen when you get there, preacher? Jesus Christ is going to get in this side and I'm going to get in this side and He's going to step out over here and He's going to come over to my side and step in. Amen. He's going to level it out. Amen. Say why? Because He took my place. Amen. He took my place. You'll be weighing the balances and you'll either be found wanting or you'll be found with Him in your side. I'm talking about the record by which judged. And last of all, I want to show you this and I'll be finished quickly. <clears throat> I showed you the judge. And I showed you those being judged at the last judgment judgment day. I showed you the record by which they're judging. Now, last of all, I want you to see this. The outcome of the judgment. I want everybody to pay attention. I want to show you the outcome of the judgment. Look at verse number 14 and I'll show it to you. Verse number 14, the outcome of the judgment. The Bible said, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. In verse 15, one of the saddest verses in all the Bible. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. <laughs> not because you were good, not because you were bad, not because of anything you did, but because your name was not found written in the book of life, you were cast into the lake of fire. That's right. <laughs> so what's the outcome of the judgment? The outcome of the judgment is this. God, in His mercy and wisdom and righteousness, will sit on the throne and He'll say, He'll look at you, and I can see the picture today. I can see you standing there in shreds. As you got your clothes shredded and your righteousness on you, and you stand there before God, and you shiver and you shake, and there's nobody to help you, there's nobody to love you, and there's nobody to care for you. Your family's not there. The friends you lived so long to impress are not there. The people you cared impressing so much are not there. And you stand there and you shiver and you shake. And God looks at you and He says, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. I knew you not. That's right. He said, I knew you not. But you think in your mind, Preacher, I didn't go. I went to church. I knew you not. But God knows my heart. I prayed every day I prayed. I knew you not. But I even read my Bible. I knew you not. Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire. I knew you not. Amen. Listen. I'm talking about the outcome of this judgment. A lawyer had a bird. <clears throat> he could talk. And he taught this bird to talk and it was his prized possession. And a young boy came in one day and he was impressed with this bird. And uh, he taught the bird, the lawyer taught the bird, he called it Starlin. And he, he talked to, to the bird and say, Starlin? And he'd say, here I am. Here I am. He taught him to talk. One day a young boy came into the, to the office there and a lawyer stepped out to do something. The little boy liked that bird so he figured he'd just take it. And he took it and he put it in his pocket. He's going to steal it. And the lawyer came back in and he looked around and to his amazement, his most prized thing, his bird was gone. And he looked and he didn't see it anywhere and he looked around everywhere and he didn't see it anywhere. And the idea came to him. He said, Stalin, where are you? And from the boy's pocket, the answer came, Here I am. So what you're saying, the Bible says there's nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. That's right. Nothing, That's nothing. Right. You say, I did it. Nobody knows about it. I got it hidden. Nobody knows about it. God will call for those sins and they'll come back one by one. And there's nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. Nothing. Everything you do shall be revealed. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes 12, 14, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Everything. He'll bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. A man one time, an infidel lecturer, didn't believe in God, didn't believe in anything. He told William Booth this, and I quote, He said, if I believe what you Christians say you believe, he said, if I believed in, in uh, judgment, a coming judgment, a day of reckoning, if I believed in the eternal lostness of the Christ rejectors, he said, then I would get down on my hands and knees in crushed glass and crawl all over London, England to tell men about Christ. I'd tell them. Why? Because of the coming judgment that we say we believe in. That's right. 
The Bible said, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I said the other day, and I've said it many times, don't you pay real close attention, I'm just about finished. <clears throat> the Bible said over there in, in the book of Matthew, you know, you know, the Bible says also, before I say this, the Bible said that we should get, as Christians, people that are saved, that said we would have a glorified body or a body fashioned like unto His body. And that we would be created someday, we'd have a body in His image. Amen. So the body that we get is exactly like His body in eternity. You understand what I'm saying? Why is that so? Because He is our Father. And because He's our Father, we get a body just like His body. The Bible said, concerning everybody, look closely. Concerning everybody who did not know Jesus Christ, the Bible said, you're of your father, the devil. That's right. And the lust of your father you will do. That's right. The devil is a serpent. The Bible calls him that old serpent. He's a serpent. And Jesus in the New Testament looked at his serpent and he said this. He said, bind them hand and foot and cast them into outer darkness. He said, when I get to hell, I'm going to party. When I get to hell, I'm going to see my friends. I'm going to talk to them. We're going to endure this thing together. No, you're not. The Bible said, bind them hand and foot just like a worm. No use of your hands, no use of your fate. Just exactly like a serpent. Cast them into outer darkness where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And you'll squirm like a worm. The Bible said, Mark chapter 9, verse 30, 44, Where there a worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. You'll squirm for eternity with your hands and your feet bound, and you'll beg for water, and you'll beg for help, and beg for somebody to do something for you. But you rejected Jesus Christ, and it's too late now. The sentence has been given. It's finished. It's done. The judge has made his calling. It's over. It's done. It's finished. And you'll squirm for eternity in the lake of fire. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 27, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, Amen. but after this, the judgment. Mm -hmm. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. The Bible said in Psalm 59, 8, But thou, O Lord, listen to this. So what's going to happen, preacher? Last of all, what's going to happen? God's going to, going to cry, and He's going to weep, and He's going to have mercy on me, because, because God is a God of love, and whenever it's time for me, in the lake of fire God's going to weep and he's going to cry and have mercy on me Psalm 59 8 says this and this is so sad but the Bible said but thou O Lord shalt laugh at them Amen. you think about the God that loved you so much and cared about you and, and died on the cross for you and wept till his tears became a sweat uh, sweat became as great drops of blood and he wept and he cried and the Bible said he wept over Jerusalem and he prayed and he cried and now he kicks you off into the lake of fire and you shiver and you scream and say no God no I love you God give me another chance and God is laughing at you as you drop off into hell he laughs the Bible said he'll laugh when your calamity comes you'll see a side of God you never knew he had when he laughs at you it kicks you in the lake of fire I'll tell you this story and I'm finished. The last thing I'll say this morning, there was a man back several years ago in history, he claimed his relationship to the British government. He was a citizen of the United States. He was arrested in Brazil and he was sentenced to die for treason and nobody could save him. The United States did everything they could. The government tried every way they could to save him. The British government did everything they could to spend all the money they could. They Representatives, they tried everything they could to save this man, and he was still sentenced to die in Brazil. They was going to kill him. The day of his sentencing finally came, and two representatives, one from England, or one from, from the United States, and one from England, walked up to this man as he stood there to die. Listen closely. They walked up to this man as he stood there sentenced to die, and they took a British flag and a United States flag, and they wrapped it around his body, and they said, Now shoot. If you shoot that man, you're taking on the United States and Britain. And he's backed by the governments of both, both countries. And they said he can go free. When everything else has failed someday, I'll stand before God. The Bible said in Isaiah 64, 6, all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes 7, 20, there's not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. The Bible said in Romans chapter 3, for there's none good. All have sinned. Amen. And someday I'll stand there and God will look at me and you'll say, what will be your plea? 
My plea will be, I'll be wrapped in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to tell God I was a preacher. I'm not going to tell Him I was a member of Freedom Baptist Church. I'm not going to tell Him how many souls I won, how many times I prayed, how many times I'll keep my mouth shut and say, His righteousness is my righteousness. I'm wrapped in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. If that's not your plea, you have no plea. That's right. Judgment day is coming. Judgment day is coming. Let's bow our heads. Amen. <clears throat>